This video looks at installing Tomcat version 8 on Windows 10. First, you'll need to download the Tomcat installation file. If you search on Google for Tomcat download, you'll find a variety of links for the Apache Tomcat website. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference which one you go to. They all have the menu on the left-hand side. Under download, go for Tomcat 8. And then scroll down, and you'll see the download section for the current version. This one happens to be 8030. You may wonder why we don't go ahead and download Tomcat 9. At this time, Tomcat 9 is still in version M1, so it's not quite ready to be supported yet by projects like Eclipse. That support will come soon enough once the version 9.0.0 is released. So back on the Tomcat 8 page, scroll down until you see the general download section. And under the core you're looking for the 32-bit, 64-bit Windows Service Installer. You can install using these other options, but this is probably the easiest way to install it, at least on Windows. It's a small download. Depending on bandwidth, it should take just a couple minutes to download the package. The name of the file should be Apache Tomcat and then the version .exe. If you accidentally try to download one of the other versions, It'll probably be a zip file, so that'll tell you that you're really downloading just the files and not the installer. The .exe version is a program that helps you install all the files, register the files as a service, and then also can help you start the service. It'll ask you at the end if you want to start the service or not. To start services on Windows so that you can see the services that are running, you can run the services.msc snap-in, or you can just type in service at the start menu, or using this also using the search feature. And that'll be how you get to the services app. Once Apache is installed, it'll appear up here as Apache Tomcat. If you want the services to appear on your taskbar, type in services, right click on the services area, and then say pin to taskbar or pin to start, respectively. And that'll put the icon down here on the taskbar or make the icon appear in the start menu, respectively. Once the download completes, go to the Downloads folder and then run the, the installer program. You may see a UAC pop-up. You would select Yes. If you have problems at this point, it may be because you are not running as a user with enough privileges to alter the disk. So you may have to run the installer program as administrator, accept the UAC pop-up from that point in order to have enough privileges. If you've made it this far, you're probably in good shape. On this screen, you can decide if you want to install the host manager or not. It's not needed just for server installations, but if you're doing development on this particular box, you may want the host manager. 
if you're running this box as a pure server just to deploy your apps to, perhaps not. You can accept the default ports as you like, and here you can name the service that will appear in the services application that we spoke of earlier. You can also give a administrative login to the Tomcat interface. Now, by default, this has always traditionally been Tomcat, Tomcat, but it's not a good idea to use that as username and password. Security tools assume that the username and password will be Tomcat, Tomcat, and they will have an opportunity to exploit the Tomcat application if you use those traditional username and password. It's better to pick some other username and password. On this screen, you're going to choose the folder of the Java runtime environment. I've installed a Java runtime and I put it under C program files, which is a common location for applications on Windows 10. In the Java directory, I have the JDK that I've downloaded and installed. This one is JDK 1.8. and I'm going to choose that Java development kit. And then I'm going to install in the program files folder, again, the default folder on Windows 10 for programs. You notice that the installer correctly identified whether this version of Windows was 32 or 64-bit and automatically chose the 64-bit version. We can tell that because the if it had been the 32-bit version, it would have installed it under the program files x86 directory, but it correctly put it under the program files directory. And click finish. And the installation will go ahead and start the service for you. To check on your service, open up the services program. You may need to refresh if you had opened it from earlier. and you'll see the Apache Tomcat 8 service. And it's running because we chose to run it after we got done with the installation. If you double click on it, you can see the different settings. If you want the Apache service to start automatically, then select automatic for your Tomcat server and Windows will automatically start the program running for you when Windows gets done booting. If you find that you need Tomcat to start up later in the process because there's some sort of problem when it starts up right away, you can do a delayed start and that will cause Windows to wait until after all of the other Windows services have started before it starts the Tomcat server running in the background. For most situations, just setting it to automatic will work fine. So now you see how to install Apache Tomcat on Windows 10.